first of all when you see a warehouse right can somebody tell me which is the best warehouse that you know of which is the best warehouse i'm taking in a very broad sense huh custom bonded warehouse okay anybody else the first best warehouse is this right or wrong second best warehouse is this you are using it every day this and this as far as your training program is concerned you have to use this warehouse more and you have got to shift more knowledgeable goods over here right but the present lecture is not dealing with warehouses as such let's get that picture clear chapter 9 of the customs act deals with a certain set of procedures which are known as warehousing procedures warehousing procedure we may touch warehouses we may not touch warehouses but the procedure is a whole set of procedures what does the procedure allow goods after landing are permitted to be removed to a warehouse without payment of customs duty and duty is collected at the time of clearance of the goods the warehouses are normally appointed or licensed at particular places only which have been declared by the central board of excise and customs now the primary objective of warehousing chapter is that goods have got to be kept stored without payment of customs duty for a certain period of time that is the primary requirement now why did this requirement come into place in the very first stage let us understand that also if we go back to 15 or 20 years at that point of time the normal average duty was around 150 to 300 percent on most of the goods because of the heavy duty structure the trade could not import large quantities and therefore the goods became more costly because when you buy larger quantities you get quantity discounts and you say foreign exchange also therefore with a view to say foreign exchange and allow the importers to import large quantities of the goods customs act had this procedure brought in and the importers were allowed to bring in larger quantity of goods keep the goods in a custom bonded warehouse without payment of duty and then as and when they required smaller quantities pay duty for the smaller quantities remove it use it you need another smaller quantities pay duty for the other smaller quantity remove it and use it you could remove part 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 and use it this was the olden reasoning but today we don't have this reason at all because today we do not have any item which is having 150 or 300% duty no today if we go to see the maximum duty level is around 
30 to 50 percent. And therefore, the old concept of warehousing is not prevalent today. But then we have got different facilities being granted today. That is, goods are imported, manufactured or repacked, and then exported out. Or goods are imported in larger quantities over here and then re-exported out in smaller quantity to other countries to save on freights. These are some of the different reasoning of warehousing. Primary objective today is to give a boost to exports. And therefore, manufacturing activities have been allowed without payment of customs duties in custom bonded warehouses known as export processing zone or EOUs. Procedure is same. So let us now start understanding what the procedure is involved. First we have section 57 under which the public warehouses are appointed. Now, can somebody name some of the public warehouses? CWC. Yes. CWC. Yes. CWC warehouses are all public warehouses. All the CFS today that we have in any part of India, they are all public warehouses. Even the port area where goods are allowed to be cleared, they are public warehouses. Even airport area where goods are allowed to be kept, that is also public warehouse area. Section 58 says that private warehouses have to be licensed. That is if a large importer owns his own warehouse or property and he wants to convert it into a customs bonded warehouse then subject to certain conditions, he will be allowed to convert some part of that warehouse as a custom bonded warehouse by getting the warehousing license under section 58. Section 59 talks about a bond, warehousing bond. And what we call as a double duty bond. In the past, the size of the bond was also double the size. If those who are using the bond in the olden days, they must have seen that the bond size is big, though you write nothing in it. Size is big. But no, double duty bond does not say that because of the size of the bond, applicability of duty declared on the bond has to be double. Why double? Normally you are required to pay only single duty. But when you are keeping the goods for a certain period of time in the custom bonded warehouse, then you are liable to pay warehouse rent, insurance premium, etc., etc., etc. Right? And when you keep it over a period of time, there is a certain cost involvement. If you don't pay, then if even if the government auctions the goods, then they will recover it on that basis. Or they will issue a notice. You may have to pay double the duty amount. So therefore, a double duty bond is taken, registered with the bond department. 